So as I'm driving all over the country, I'm getting a lot of people want to stop and they want to talk to me about the tear job. It definitely gets a lot of attention. And of course, I'm advertising a YouTube and an Instagram channel on the side of mine. So of course, people are always curious, right? They want to know more about it. They want to know where I've been, where I'm going, where I've been, what I've seen. And that's awesome. I love talking to people. I love being able to talk to locals. I love being able to talk to other travelers and kind of hear their story and share mine with them. Well, I tend to get a lot of the same questions though over and over and over. So that's why I thought in this video, I'd share the top 10 questions I get asked most about my teardrop trailer. Well, I'll show you what's in here. All right, mostly a bed. When you come down in here, this is it. This is my little house. And right over here is my bed. So right now, I got my bed over here with some clothes on it. Uh, up here, I have all my cabinets for clothes. Lots of space to put all sorts of clothes up there. Over here, I've got a nice big area to sit down. That's why I have this uh, pillow back here just to make it easier to rest against. A little pad to sit on at night. Over here I have just really storage. I have an extra sleeping bag back there. I have uh, some more blankets, some toilet paper, other toiletries, my medicine cabinet, some my pee bottle. I have my little heater fan in here, my little bathroom area. Kind of everything right in one little spot. I even have some cool lighting. I don't think it's claustrophobic. I think it's just fine. I'm obviously sitting up. Uh, I got my legs out in front of me. I got plenty of space. Uh, my bed's right here. I sleep here every single night, obviously. And I'm about six foot. And I think the trailer is roughly like 76 inches or so. <clears throat> so there's a few inches at my feet and a few inches in my head to uh, get comfortable every single night and sprawl out. Um, I got plenty of space over here for someone else to uh, sit down and get out of the cold. Um, right now it's about 35 degrees outside and it's only like 50 degrees inside the trailer. The only thing that sucks about the trailer is I can't stand up in here. So putting on pants is quite the chore and I can't get a chair in here. So when I'm coming in here to get out of the cold, like I have been tonight all night, uh, I, after sitting here for a while, uh, my ass kind of goes numb after a while, just sitting here on the ground like this. But I got plenty of room for storage. I've got all my clothes up here in these cabinets. I got my speaker in here. I've got power. I can run the Mr. Buddy heater to get some extra heat going on in here. I got places to put little miscellaneous things. Uh, it works for me. It's great. I have my laptop right here. I do some editing at night. I've got my charge controller right there. I can plug uh, everything into that. So yeah, it works. It can get pretty cold in here. Right now it's about 50 degrees. Um, one morning I woke up and I think it was about 30 degrees. Um, now when I'm not sleeping, I usually just wrap up in a blanket. I just keep my jacket on, um, put on some wool socks. And I'm usually pretty good. Sometimes I'll run like my little electric heater or I have a little propane Mr. Buddy heater. I'll run that uh, to really warm up the room. Um, but those are kind of extreme circumstances. Generally speaking, um, when I'm just sitting here and I'm editing or I'm just trying to get out of the cold in general, it's not so bad. I sleep very, very warm inside my sleeping bag, I gotta say, though. I have a fleece liner and a 35-degree rated bag uh, with a blanket on top of that. I'm fine when I sleep. It's really only when I'm trying to get in out of the cold that you find yourself just kind of still bundled up a little bit, uh, keeping your, your jacket on and everything. Um, but in general, it's not super hot in here. No, there's no bathroom in this thing. So I piss in this and I shit in that. Uh, basically, if you, have, if you do van life or you live in any kind of vehicle without a bathroom in it, like, and like a RV, you're gonna want one of these. P bottle is essentially it. This thing is definitely more of an extravagant purchase if you do this kind of lifestyle. 
But what I do like about this is I can take this inside the teardrop and use it. So I cook back here in the galley area. These doors here just open right up. You got everything right here. So I filmed back here cooking before, but I'll do another little breakdown for this video. This table actually slides out so it's easy to cook on. Right now I'm boiling some water so I can do some dishes in hot water and not cold water. Uh, I actually turn that off because it's ready. Uh, so I have nice big prep area here. I can get things going. Um, and then I have two boxes here. The first box is mostly condiments. I do have some dry goods like uh, quinoa. I'll keep sometimes a little bit of rice back here. But I have some cups. I have some condiments. I have some olive oil, some um, lemon juice, um, spices. I do have some canned vegetables, although I haven't eaten any of those yet because I prefer using real vegetables. Uh, but that's basically this uh, main part of this box. Over here was all the stuff I had at home. So a bunch of utensils, silverware. Um, and this is literally just in a jar that I had at home that's duct tape on the inside of this box so it won't go moving around. And then over here is kind of like my clean supplies. I always clean up my area after I'm done eating. It's just how I've always been. So I like to do that also on the road. And uh, you know, things to cook, to clean off the cast iron skillets with. Um, and that's just on the outside here so it can drip dry if it needs to. And then over here in this bin, I have plates. I have some uh, cutlery. I have, you know, barbecue lighter. Uh, then I also have my skillets back here. So this bin works really well for all that. Um, at, um, in the morning time or at dusk when I'm getting ready for bed, maybe I'll, uh, actually set up a little mirror here and this will turn into my bathroom. And I can brush my teeth, I can take my contacts out or put them in or anything like that. I really just cook the same things I would cook at home. I've definitely always been someone who prefers real food. So I like to cook with real vegetables and I like to have, you know, fish and chicken. I'll do steak sometimes over the grill. Sometimes I just cook like a stew or something like that, something simple. I try to stay away from those mountain meals or those uh, dehydrated meals you get at the store. You just pour hot water in there. Although I do have a couple, I'll admit, and they're great for quick, easy meals. You literally just boil some water and you put it in there. And in about 10 minutes, you've got dinner. Cleanup is obviously very, very simple. But they're not very good tasting to me, so I don't enjoy eating them. And they're pretty expensive. They're about 9 or $10 a package. And I can eat a lot less than that if I just go to the grocery store. It's not that difficult, really. Um, what I did when I first got the trailer is I practiced in an empty parking lot near my house before I left. And I just literally took the uh, trailer around the parking lot, just trying to get a feel for it first. And, and then I would try to take turns seeing how well how sharp of a turn I could really take with the teardrop and really the trailer is not that bad when it comes to pulling it uh, I'm turning because you can take a turn just almost as sharp as you can take a turn with the, the car occasionally you'll still catch a curb or two but it's usually not that bad as far as backing up I did the same thing I just went to the parking lot and I practiced backing up into parking spaces uh, from different angles. Um, yeah, um, that's like anything else though. You have to just kind of give it a shot and just uh, keep trying and you realize the things that you, you, you messed up on and you just do it again. Um, even now, uh, when I'm backing up, sometimes I'll start to uh, turn the wheel the wrong way, but you quickly change it. The biggest thing about this when you're backing up anything on the teardrop is just small turns because the biggest turns will really start to have a bigger impact. So the small turns really have big enough impact that you just have to take very small turns on the steering wheel, just small, small adjustments, and I think we'll back right up. It's not that hard. The best thing about the teardrop though is when you uh, get into a jam and you need to turn it somewhere but you really can't do it with the car, you can just unhook that thing and pick it up by the tongue and just swivel it around. It's heavy but not that heavy really i put some extra weight in my tongue with the spare tire and the two lock boxes that have a bunch of stuff in them so mine's got a little bit of weight 
but it's really not that tough. You can easily do that. So there's a couple of things I do to protect myself from stealing the trailer. First off, all these keys, yeah, they all go to the trailer. Eight keys for that little teardrop. One of the first things I do is right here on the hitch. I know the sunlight's in there, so it's a little bad to see. I'm gonna zoom in. That's a hitch lock right there. So that hitch lock prevents anybody from being able to take the hitch off the car while the trailer is attached and just drive off with the trailer attached to their car. So I have two locks right here. I have a coupler lock here and a coupler lock right here. The coupler lock right here prevents anybody from being able to hitch up to the ball mount. And the coupler lock right here prevents anybody will pull up this pin. If you can't pull up this pin, then you can't get a ball mount down of here. Each one of my lock boxes has a uh, lock on it. Pretty big ones too. And then right over here, I have my boot lock, which goes right on the wheel. So it prevents anybody from being able to actually pull this thing anywhere. Well, a teardrop can start anywhere from $10,000 and go all the way up to $40,000. And there's a lot of things that can determine that price, right? It could be the build quality. What kind of material is it made out of? Is it made out of fiberglass, wood? Um, does it have a galley like mine has? Is it two doors? Is it one door? Uh, does it come with a bed already installed in it? Did the galley have things like a built-in fridge, built-in stove? Does it have windows? Does the inside not only have a bed inside, but does it have cabinetry? And does that was that cabinetry made out of, you know, some high-end wood? There's a lot of things to determine when it comes down to the price. And the big thing you have to question yourself is, what do I need to make this more comfortable for me? I lucked out and got this uh, used for 4,500. So you can definitely find them. I like this one because it's six foot wide, which gives me a lot of extra space for storage. Um, the galley area is huge, it allows me to do a good meal. It didn't come with a built-in fridge or anything like that. I supply all those things, but I already had all those things, so I wouldn't want to buy all those things anyways again. Hey guys, those are the top 10 questions I get asked the most about my teardrop trailer. Do you have a teardrop trailer? What kind of questions do you get asked the most about it? Let me know in the comment below. As always, thanks for watching and escaping normal life with me.